G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. Now, if you managed to catch the Retro Channel's live stream from whenever it was last month, the one that I gate crashed, you may remember that at the end of it, we pulled out an Atari 600 XL that I was actually there to pick up. Now, the reason I was there to pick it up is Mark actually recently got himself a 130 XE, which makes a nice companion to the 65 XE he's been working on. Uh, and so this 600 XL uh, is quite a nice match to the 800 XL that uh, has been featured on the channel previously. Now, I've actually become quite the fan of that machine. Uh, of, I reckon out of all the machines that uh, I have uh, discovered since I've been doing YouTube, the Atari 800 is probably my favorite. So it's very nice to have this matching one. So today though, we are going to throw some upgrades at this machine. Uh, I want to upgrade it to 64K of RAM, uh, the same as the 800 XL. Uh, I want to do an S video mod on this to hopefully get some bit better video quality out of it. Uh, and we are going to replace the ROM with a modern one, which supposedly uh, should speed up disk access speeds. Now I'm using an S drive max, but in theory, it should speed it up. So let's get started. So I have already removed the board from the case just to simply save some time, uh, powered it on, and this is currently running through the composite video. Now you're not gonna be able to see from there, but I will now put up a still image, uh, and you should be able to tell quite easily that that is a blurry mess. So the first thing I wanna do is the S video mod. So step one in this is to remove uh, a few components. Uh, we need to remove the resistor at uh, R137, which is just here. Uh, we also want to remove a tiny little capacitor, which is a green guy kind of down in here, which is C112. Uh, and then C109, which should be... Uh, where is it? I think it's this blue guy just here. Yes. Yes, it is. So, desoldering gun is uh, warming up, or has warmed up. Uh, and I'm going to start by removing those three components. At least I hope these are the right ones. Right, with some uh, bits unsold, desoldered that I didn't need to, and then resoldered, and some fresh solder, and some swearing, those three components are now out. Right, the next step is uh, this here is the back of the monitor connector, just here, uh, and we need to cut a trace, and it is this one just here. So, with my knife handy, let's start hacking through this. That is a very thick trace. Right, I think I'm through. Let's test it with a multimeter. Yes, successful, I get no beep. Right, the next bit is to wire in some 75 ohm resistors, uh, and they want to go to this port he spot here on the back of the monitor connector, one where we've just sliced a trace from, uh, and this far one on the right. So, start by adding some fresh solder. Right, now these resistors I have already shortened and pre-tinned, so that can just go on there like that. Nice. And the other one. Very nice. Right, from here, we just want to shorten them up and tin these. Uh, 
and join some thin wire to them. And at this point, it's probably not a bad idea to uh, heat shrink both of those. So where these two wires actually need to go is to the base of a couple of transistors. Now, they are, I think, Q6 and Q9, but in reality, this wire on the left of these four empty uh, spots here where we remove some comp uh, components, it needs to go to the very bottom one just here. The other wire needs to come down to a spot just down here. So if you kind of take this big blob of um, solder mask and it runs down to a point here and it's actually the next one up. So it's just there. And that should be us done. So really, there's nothing left to do now but test it. No, no it's not because I'm an idiot. This one should be go to here. Because that's our chroma pin and I just tested it and I had nothing. Now, quickly, before we power this on, uh, just so you're aware, the monitor port pinout now looks a bit like this. Uh, and the cable that I'm going to use is actually one I made up ages ago for my 800XL, so I'm not gonna run you through that. But the only tip I will give you is don't try and use one of the um, four pin mini DIN S video plugs that you can solder into, because uh, they always just end up big and chunky and a mess. Do yourself a favor, just get an existing S-video cable, lop one end off, uh, strip back the wires and uh, solder that into the DIN connector. Anyway, right, let's now uh, power this thing on. Right, as you can see, it works. Again, I'll put up a still image on the screen about now, uh, and it is considerably sharper. We do have some horizontal lines, which I'm not a big fan of, but it's certainly a lot sharper than it was. So the next thing I want to do is I want to upgrade this from 32K to 64K of RAM, and there are some modifications that we have to do. But the very first step is quite simple. We are going to pop out the two existing 4416 RAM chips, if it'll let me. And they can just go to the side. And we're going to replace them with these, which are 4464 chips. And of course, we have to do our usual little straightening of legs. And they should pop straight in where the old ones were. Right, they're in, no legs out of bed or anything like that. So, the next thing is we need to pull out U5, uh, which is, I believe, this guy just here. It is U5. And we want to lift leg three. So, one, two, three. We want to just bring that leg out, hope preferably without breaking it. Off. Okay. Now this is nothing exciting. This is like a 74LS158. Uh, so it's nothing particularly exciting. And what I'm also going to do is snip off the skinny bit of the leg 
Before we put that in back in, I'm going to do myself a favour and actually pre-tin uh, that leg that we bent out. It's covered in crap. I should have cleaned it first. Right, we've managed to get some solder on that. Now it can go back into its socket. Right, next we want to remove U6. And we want to lift leg 10. Uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we kind of want to do the same again. Just carefully lift that out. And I'm going to trim the little tip off it. This time, however, I'm going to find myself a tiny little bit of sandpaper. And I'm just going to do my best to kind of clean the crap off it. There we go. And now I should be able to pre-tin this one a bit more successfully. Oh, that's way too much solder on my soldering iron. But we have managed to pre-tin it. Bring the board back in, reinstall that guy. It wants to go back into its socket. Come on. Right, that is all looking good. Next, we want to come across to U16. And you probably already can guess where this is going. Right, and we want to lift leg eight. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the end one just here, because this is a 14 pin chip. Again, snip off the little bit of the leg pre-tin it so we can join to it a lot easier in a minute and drop it back into its socket. Right, the last thing we need to do is lift the bottom leg of R36, which should be this guy just here, even though it's not actually marked, it's this guy right there and we want to lift the end of that. So, desoldering gun back on. Okay, with the leg of that resistor lifted, let's add a bit of solder to it. Make life a little easier. Let's get a piece of pre-tinned wire Solder it on. And once again, probably not a bad idea to drop some heat shrink on that. So the wire that we just joined to that resistor has to come over to the pin we lifted on U16. So it just needs to come over there like so. Now, if we come down to the two legs we lifted here, it's probably not a bad idea to join some wire up to them now. Close by, you will find just below U14, a series of four vires. We need numbers three and four. So once again, a little bit of fresh solder. And we want to join the wire from U5. Let's get the wire from U6 just kind of out of the way. It needs to come down to the third spot down here.
And obviously the wire from U6 needs to come across to the fourth spot. And that is our job done. This machine should now have 64K of RAM. Right, I've temporarily hooked the keyboard back up and if I hold down, I think it's option and turn it on, if I can find the power switch, there we go. We should boot into diagnostics. Right, memory test is the first one. So we'll go start, does a ROM test. And we'll sit here and do a RAM test. This should be fun to watch. And as it starts running through its second run, we can see all is good with the world. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the ROM. Now, the main reason to do this from what I am told is that it speeds up disk loading time. So as a bit of a benchmark before I swap the ROM over, I want to load up Yump. Okay, Yump not only is one of my favorite games on the Atari, it's also not exactly the quickest game to load. So I have very scientifically my stopwatch on my phone and I'm gonna go option reset and go. Right. Taking into account my rubbish reflexes, that took 27.9 seconds to load. So now I'm going to swap the ROM over uh, and we'll see if there's actually any difference. Right, new ROM is in. So let's see if I can do this key combination because Yum's a bit funny because you've got to disable basic as you do it, as you can see here. So let's see if I can do this. Uh, uh, uh. Ah. Oh, I hit lap but it was 17.25 seconds. So that's a bit faster. And there we go. We have some upgrades on my 600 XL. It now has 64K of RAM, just like its bigger brother, the 800. Uh, we have a slightly faster running ROM. Well, at least the disk drive speed is a bit faster. Uh, and it now puts out slightly better video with the S-Video mod. Uh, and I think it's quite the nice uh, companion to its bigger brother. They certainly do look good together. Uh, but for now, that will pretty much do it. If you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, I am now on Patreon, just like these wonderful people just here. But for now, I'm going to go and play some Yump, and I will see you in the next one.